First Thessalonians 3, verse 1. Let's get a, uh, a running start. Thank you. We have heard the Word of God preached this afternoon, haven't we? Yes, yes. yes. But we're not quite done. Come on. Come on. I want to talk about we need to go deeper in our faith. Really, the one thing that's going to take everything that we've already talked about and really put it into a nice, neat package that's executable is faith. Amen. First Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1 says, So when we could stand it no longer, we thought it best to be left by ourselves in Athens. We sent Timothy, who is our brother and co-worker in God's service and spreading the gospel of Christ, to strengthen and encourage you in your faith, so that no one would be unsettled by these trials. For you know quite well that we're destined for them. In fact, when we were with you, we kept telling you that we would be persecuted. And it turned out that way, as you well know. For this reason, when I could stand it no longer, I sent to find out about your faith. I was afraid that some way the tempter had tempted you, and that our labor might have been in vain. So Paul sends Timothy, leaving himself alone in Athens. We all know how Athens went for, Timoth or for Paul. Alone in Athens to send Timothy to the Thessalonican church to find out what was going on. We already know in Acts 17, he only spent a couple of weeks there before he got driven out by the Jews. Where typically, if you read through the book of Acts, he spends quite a bit of time in these churches, strengthening them, teaching them. So he was like, you guys baptize and I'm out. I got to go. I got to get out of here. And so he's longing here in Athens to know, was this legit? Did these guys stick around? Did they find the test? And we see that word twice. He says, when we could stand it no longer, I sent Timothy. When I could stand it no longer, he's going, man, i got to know how these things yeah. went. Mm -hmm. Now the challenge is he's talking about this tempter. Who's the tempter? Matthew 4. The tempter is Satan. Yep. Mm -hmm. In order for us to have deeper faith, we've got to know what kills faith. 2 Corinthians 2.11 talks about how Paul says, hey, we're not unaware of, God, of the devil's schemes. We know what he's after. And we know what he's after in Matthew 13, verse 1 to 23. We'll pick it up here in verse 18. Jesus is talking. He says, listen then to what the parable of the sower means. When anyone hears the message about the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what was sown in their heart. This is the seed sown along the path. The seed falling on rocky ground refers to someone who hears the word and at once receives it with joy, but since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. The seed falling among the thorns refers to someone who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke the word, making it unfruitful. But the seed that falls on good soil refers to someone who hears the word and understands it, this is the one that produces a crop yielding 160 or 30 times what was sown. See, Satan's only got three basic rules. Three basic ways that he goes after us. The first one is, he will try to block faith from even happening. He's going to snatch it up. He's going to snatch it up. He's going to try to keep faith. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 says, The God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel. His first approach is to keep them from believing, keep them from understanding, keep them from having faith, period. Mm -hmm. The second approach is if they start to have faith, they're starting to get some roots, they're starting to go down deep, what happens? Well, the sun comes out and scorches them. It says in Luke, Mark talks about how there's no moisture because it's rocky soil. The moisture just goes right on through, right? So they have no root. Or... As we read a little earlier, right? The weeds or the thorns choke out the faith. Yeah. Okay. He wants to destroy that initial movement of faith. Yeah. The third one, and this is one for us disciples, where we've got to take special note and pay some special attention. Help us out, bro. It says, if he couldn't stop it altogether, and if he can't choke out our initial faith, then he's going to go after giving us persecution. Hmm. He's going to yeah, hit us with things true. True. That, that we don't, that we can't deal with. And persecution doesn't just come from non-believers. Nope. Persecution comes from the evil one. Right. right? Sometimes that comes through people. Yes. Yeah. Sometimes that just comes through drama. I'll get to that in a little bit. I got some drama that I got to share with you. But Paul here, he's protective of these people. He's concerned. They're baby Christians. They're brand new in the faith. And they're susceptible to this temptation. 1 Peter 5.8 says that Satan prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour I never caught this before, but roaring lion. Can you hear a roaring lion? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're not aware of his schemes. 
He, we can see him coming. We can hear him coming. But are we going to take heed? If Satan can't stop us from believing the word, if he can't choke us out, then he's going to try to devastate our faith. He's going to try to weaken it. He's going to try to suck us into sin. Yep. That 1 Peter 5.8 gives us some really good ways that we can mess with this, that we can deal with this. He says in verse 9, resist him, standing firm in the faith, because you know the family of believers throughout the world are undergoing the same kinds of suffering. We have to protect our faith. We have to protect our faith by knowing what is coming at us. Satan kills faith. We've got to be aware of his schemes in order to fight against them, in order to stand firm in our faith. We need faith to stand firm in it. And the more we have faith, the more we can stand firm in it. So how do we keep faith? Go back to 1 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 6. It says, But Timothy has just now come from us, or from you, and has brought good news about your faith awesome. and love. So this is like Paul, Paul, Timothy walks in the door. Let me tell you about the Thessalonians. They're doing awesome. And Paul's like, oh, i got to write these guys now. Like he just came, shared the good news. You hear that word good news there? Yeah. It's the same word for gospel. It's such good news that he's hearing from the Thessalonians that the only way that he can describe his feeling about this good news is to use the only word that means saving faith through Christ's death. The gospel. It's the only time that it's used elsewhere in the New Testament is for gospel. Amen. And, this is, and that's the word he used. It's pretty cool when I, when I found that out. Now, what kind of good news is this? Okay. Well, there's kind of two points here. First, he talks about their faith. Their fa what did he want to find out about? Their faith. Their faith. Yep. So they found out his, their faith is real. It's legit. It's, it's good. Amen. Right? Yep. They're good soil. They weren't rocky soil. They, they weren't letting the weeds choke them, the thorns choke them. Yeah. Right? They didn't get burned off. They were good soil. And the second point was their love. Mm. How do we keep faith? Galatians chapter 5, verse 6, Paul writes to the Galatians and says, For in Christ Jesus, neither circumcision nor uncircumcision has any value. He's like, look, this religious stuff is worthless. It doesn't matter. There's only one thing that matters. And what does he say? He says the only thing that counts is faith expressing itself through love. John Calvin writes, uh, those two words are what sum up godliness. Faith and love. You know, a lot of this, these past three or four days have been filled with craziness. Okay. Drama. And it's all good. It's all good. There was drama around the whole, our, our, our uh, New Year's Eve thing yeah. where the, the venue people were going crazy. And I'm, I'm like, what in the world has happened? I don't want to end my year like this. And then, I, and then um, it got all worked out, got totally moved. I spent so much time on my knees just praying, went into the rooms and prayed over them. Matt and I prayed on, over brother. them, just praying, God, make this glorious. Don't let Satan punk us here. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so then I was down in, uh, in um, Colorado Springs yesterday just getting some good time with a buddy of mine who's getting deployed mm. in a couple weeks. And we went up on a mountaintop to pray, and I get this text from Julie, and Julie texts me and talks about something that happened between her and my wife, and I'm going, not how I want to end my, or start my year, is dealing with something like this. And so, so, my, yeah, so my friend Chris and I were praying, and all of a sudden I'm sitting there having coffee with my buddy Chris, and I get a text from Julie, it says, hey, did you talk to your wife? I said, no, but I talked to Jesus. Come on. He says, good, because that works. Oh, you know what I mean? And I was like, and I'm just fighting. Come on, bro. I'm just fighting. Right. Come on, bro. I, I, had a, I, I made a stupid mistake in timing there, of bro. having a conversation with, with one of my good friends, and, uh, and that blew up. And I'm like, I'm, I'm in my closet on my knees, and I'm going, God, I do not want to start out the first day of the year with drama with my friend. I don't want it to happen. Have him call me. A couple hours later, I get a call. We work it out, and it's awesome. And our friendship is strengthened because Come of it. Come on, bro. Come on, bro. Faith expressing itself through love. God is giving me faith by answering my prayers. God is giving me faith by showing me love so that I can give that to others. Romans 10, 17. Consequently, faith comes up here in the message. And the message is heard through the word of Christ. Amen. We've got to be reading our Bible. Uh, Joe did a 
Great job talking about deeper in the word. Philemon 6, we've already kind of talked about it. I pray that the act of sharing your faith, you may be more effective for the full knowledge of everything that we have in Christ. We need to be sharing our faith. Faith expressing itself. We express our faith through getting in the word. We express our faith Mm -hmm. by sharing it with others. Mm -hmm. It's a pattern of getting faith and giving faith. You know, there's something that needs to complete faith. Go to verse 9. How can we thank God enough for you, he says, in return for all the joy that we have in the presence of our God because of you? He is so excited about these uh, Thessalonian believers here. Night and day we pray most earnestly that we can see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. What's lacking in their faith? Mm. He says, you guys are strong in your faith, but I know there's still work to be done. He's overjoyed, but he understands that they're not perfect. He's like, if you stand, I really live, in verse 8. But at the same time, night and day, we pray most earnestly that we may see you again and supply what is lacking in your faith. What was lacking in their faith? Fellowship. Mm -hmm. When brothers and sisters, when, when we're not with each other, there's no faith. When we're not spending time with one another, there's no faith. We should fight for our times together. If a brother calls me up and says, hey, I want to get together, I should be like, let me figure it out. Not, oh, I can't, but next Thursday, after the next Tuesday. We should, even if it's two minutes, Chad and I got together, I'm like, hey, man, depending on the women, when the women get back, I don't know if I'm going to, you know, and he's like, hey, if, even if it's 15 minutes, I'm like, sweet, and we got about a half hour, which is great. Sweet. Chad, myself, and, and Chuck getting together. Come on. we got to fight for it. we got to fight to be with one another. And we have to fight to pray for one another. Yeah, See, he had the three F's of faithful prayer. Frequency, night and day. Fervency, most earnestly. And he was focused. We keep on praying for you. It's awesome. We keep on praying. Final challenge for you guys. That's good. Come on. We need to stand firm in the faith. Go back to uh, verse 8. It's awesome. For now we really live, since you are standing firm in the Lord. It's awesome. The word stand firm is a military term. Steeko, it refers to the refusal to retreat against an attack. Stand your ground, Paul says. He says, when I see you stand your ground under attack, that's when I'm alive. That's when I really live. I know that you've got your armor on. You're holding up the shield of faith. You're holding it up. You're using it not only as a defensive weapon or a defense uh, to hold it up against the fiery darts of the evil one, but you're using it as a weapon awesome. to help fight for other people. To the Galatians, he wrote in chapter 5, verse 1, stand firm. Yeah. To the Philippians, he wrote in chapter 1, verse 27, conduct yourselves yeah. in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ. Then I will know that you stand firm in one spirit. Come on. And again, in chapter 4, verse 1 of Philippians, he writes, therefore, my brothers and sisters whom I love, and long for, there's this longing, my joy and my crown. Stand firm in the Lord, dear friends. And 2 Thessalonians, his second letter to the Thessalonians 2.15, he says, So then, brothers and sisters, stand firm and hold to the teachings we passed on to you. He always wanted them to stand firm, stand firm in the faith. And always the idea was standing against an attack and showing their faith to be real. Showing their faith to be strong. You know, there was a story that I, I, list, I heard in, uh, in a sermon that I was kind of, kind of listening to uh, over the last couple weeks. And it was the story about this evangelist, uh, nobody that we necessarily would know, but he went out to Russia and packed crowd. And he preaches a gospel sermon, probably a little false doctrine and whatnot, but he preaches false do- uh, his sermon. And he says, now anybody who wants to be a Christian, raise your hand. And about 300 people raised their hand. And the Russians, I guess, who weren't very, in this particular context, weren't like commonly known to like raise their hand to show that you're a Christian, were kind of dumbfounded by that because they're like, well, we don't know whether someone's a Christian because they raise their hand. We know someone's a Christian if they stood the, faith, the test of their faith in persecution. Mm. Mm. Uh, a tested faith is a validated faith. Yep. Awesome. Yeah, it's proof. How valid is your faith? See, Timothy came back to Paul. And this is the testimony that he brought back, was their faith was valid. Is your faith valid? Is my faith valid? We've got to live by this in 2016, fellas. 1 
Corinthians 16, 13 says, be on your guard. Yeah. Stand firm in the faith. Come on. Act like men. Be strong. Amen. Amen. Awesome. Amen. Awesome.